even though you're doing architecture. Yeah. yeah. The you also need to study the developer, contractor, engineer, all those. You need to understand what are their roles uh, and what is the relationship between them. Okay, yeah, okay. You want to talk about relationships, eh? because uh, in a project we have so many consultants, as you know, we have the architect, mm. we have the structural engineer, right. uh, civil engineer. M and E mechanical and electrical engineer, there'll be landscape architect, there'll be quantity surveys. So there are about six or seven consultants, you know. There may be more other consultants. Interior huh? designer. Uh, interior designer huh? or some other designers, okay? Mm. So in a project, there are so many, six or seven different consultants. We need to work as a team. We need to cooperate and coordinate with one another. The first person to come up with the drawings is the architect. Without the architect, the project cannot move. Mm. So once the architect produces his drawings, then he will pass his drawing to the engineer, the structural engineer. The structural engineer will use architectural drawings and, the, and produce his structural drawings. His structural drawings show the beams, the slab, the columns, the staircases. Mm. And he will design that. Okay. And then the mechanical and electrical engineer will use architectural drawing and this. he will design this air conditioning duct, say for example, run from the, you know, this air conditioning, the, the ducting, run from that room to this room, and then he will show all also. And then we have to make sure all the drawing all co are coordinated. So we need to cooperate. The, all the consultants need to communicate one with another. There may be some clashes in the drawing, so we have to work as a team mm. for the project. All the consultants are going to work as a team. So a lot of communication back and forth. Mm. So okay. how does the quantity surveying, right? how does it impact the society? How does it impact society? Mm. Well, we impact society by the, at the end of the project, the end product is a building right, or an infrastructure like an MRT. These are all uh, built environment. It will impact the, the, the space that we live in, mm. right? The roads that we build on the, on the highways. Everybody will be impacted. You, you drive, you use the roads, mm. right? If there were no roads previously, now there are roads. So you are affected. Right? The MRT now is under construction. Later when it's completed, you can ride on the MRT, you can go to place A, A to place B very conveniently and then you know the time because there will be no traffic jam on the <laughs> MRT. Right? So buildings are there, like you live in you live in a house, right? All of you have a house you live in, right? Right. Yeah. So everybody is impacted. Nobody will be excluded. But it impacts the most on the client, right? Because they save more money. Uh, are you talking about as a consultant? How do we? Well, the client needs our our services to produce a document, to evaluate the costing. Somebody got to do that, right? What we do is we provide a service. Is what a service are because at the moment you can see that our as a few continuous survey, there's no physical end product from us, or, right? You don't see any end product from the QS, right? Yeah. It's only what we do is a service. Unlike a contractor, when the contractor finishes his work, there is a physical building. There's a physical, there's a road, you can see there's a road there. Mm. That is done by the contractor. So that is the end product. The contractor will construct and produce a product that you want. Uh, it can be a house, it can be an office building, it can be a hotel. That is the end product from a contractor. For us, for QS, for architects, engineers, what we all provide is a service. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, our, you, physically you can see a uh, paper, it's a document. Right. Uh, it's all documents, we prepare a lot of documents. Mm -hmm. Architecture, you want to do architecture, what, what is your end product are drawings, right?
drawings. So, is there a difference between local and international QA? Because we know architecture, right? In local, we do the architecture and draw, but then they come out the building is like slightly different. Right? But in overseas, it's almost the same as the one you submitted on DBKL. Um, it shouldn't be different because the contractor is supposed to build according to the architect's drawing, whether local or overseas. Even a local architect, when he produces the drawings, he gives it to the contractor. The contractor is supposed to construct according to the drawing. Mm. If the drawing says the, the room is 12 meters long, he has to construct it according to 12 meters long and 3 meters high has to be according to so the drawing. What about QS? Is there a difference between local and international QS? Um, there are roles a bit different. Yeah, it's a bit different for because QS is actually part of the legacy from the United Kingdom. Mm. Right? Started there. Mm. So this profession actually was born in the UK. Oh, okay. huh? And then all the most of the Commonwealth countries adopt QS as a profession. If you go to the United States, they don't have a profession called QS, they call it cost estimators. And usually it's done by the same person in the architectural firm or engineering firm. So depending on which country you work in, the roles are quite different. UK and Singapore, Malaysia, because we are all part of the Commonwealth country, so almost the same. Uh, almost the same. So can you compare like the UK, Malaysia one with US, the cost estimator? Uh, of course, the US cost estimator we have a different way of doing things. Uh. Okay. Even within Malaysia and Singapore or even UK, each country measures uh, the same thing slightly different ways. So could be different. Uh, for Malaysia, we have what we call a standard method of measurement. It's a book, I'm not sure whether you've seen it, which uh, tells uh, in detail how an item of work has to be measured. Okay. It's like a reference where the, as a QS, we must know how to measure according to this book called as, what we, in short, uh, SMM2, or Standard of Method Measurement Edition 2. So, Malaysia have this SMM2, Singapore has its own SMM, can be 5 or 6 or whatever number, okay. and what they write in Singapore's SMM and Malaysia's SMM, even though they are quite similar, there may be differences. And then UK have its own oh, okay. SMM 19, for example. Uh, okay. And then they have slightly different way of doing things. So by and large, uh, the way we measure is almost the same, but there may be slight differences. Okay. Two differences. Um, it's too detailed. I, I didn't study the differences between each country, but uh, it can be, say for example, uh, uh, when we measure concrete, uh -huh. okay, in Malaysia we measure concrete all in volume, cube, meter cube, right? Okay, in Singapore they, they, they measure mm -hmm. columns and beams in meter cube and they measure slab in meter square, or oh. stating the thickness, things like that. Here we all measure in meter cube. Right. Singapore we measure slab in meter square, column beams all meter cube. Here also meter cube. Oh, these are things, the differences. differences, for example. Uh, 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 so it's like, like my friend here wants to be a QS. QS uh, so his, his life in the future will be like very busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can tell you, if you want to be a QS, uh, it's very uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, because, as you know, QS, we deal a lot with numbers. Numbers, eh? you, you must be good with numbers and a lot of measurements, calculations. Uh, so you must have a good class of mathematics 
but not uh, we don't go into those uh, those uh, what you call uh, applied mathematics kind of thing. You know, we share a theorem or all that. We don't do so much, but we need to know very we, we because buildings come in various shapes and sizes, right? When you measure certain things at a certain depth, certain buildings are curved or they're triangular or pentagonal. So you must be able to know the formulas that you need to use to measure certain shapes of buildings. Some some buildings are elliptical or uh, the roof is elliptical. How are you going to measure? Huh? And then reinforcement is very challenging. Reinforcement by structural engineers. The each we need to measure each bar. So uh, our work are very time consuming, especially when it comes to measurement. Measurement is only part of the scope of a QS. After you have measured it, you need to describe it. In a BQ, if, you, if later you study views of quantities, views of quantities essentially has uh, a description on one end. You will state the dis they will describe the work you are measuring. Mm -hmm. Say a door, they will mention this one is a glass door, right? right. You mentioned glass door, then you mention the type of glass, and there is float glass, tempered glass, and then the thickness, how many mm, and then you will mention the size, the width, the height, the full detail. Uh, and then in the, uh, on the, the other column, we have the unit, which is number. Each door is measured in number, and then the quantity will state how many door. Uh, then there's another column we call rate. The contractor will fill in the rate, so the number of doors multiplied by the rate, and then we have called a month column. So quantity multiplied by rate gives you an amount. So we have all the amounts in the page, and the total, that's the, that's the page total. So each field got all this very systematic. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. So measurement is only part of it, you've got to describe it. Mm -hmm. It's likely like too busy. It's very, yeah. Not enough time for other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how many, uh, because if you involve in projects, uh, each of us usually, uh, each QS, uh, we have a few projects. Mm -hmm. But then we work as a team. We I don't work alone. I cannot work alone because there's so many things to look into. Uh, so we may involve in a few projects, so there'll be few other persons doing different things and we need to the systems uh, work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the last question. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice for like, those QS future to be right here? Um, what advice? Uh? Mm -hmm. How to be successful? Okay, for uh, QS, uh, because our work is very um, involves a lot of measurement and details and numbers, you you need to be systematic, organized, and you must have a mind, have a an eye for detail, mm. and must be good with calculations. If uh, like architects usually they don't deal so much with numbers except when you do you know the spatial requirement, you are more creative. Mm. You think about shapes and sizes, how to fill a three dimension space. Okay? You are more into creativity. Right? Mm. No one is more static. Ours is more methodical, systematic. Calculations, and we must be able to work in an organized manner. Mm. So they have slightly different engineers. Also, we are more towards like our thinking is more like towards engineer. Engineer also uses a lot of figures. They analyze the loading, uh, the imposed by the load. Very architect, if you are creative minded, mm. depends. Each person different. No, I don't know what is your right. your. Person, your personality, are you a creative person? You can, you can uh, 
uh, imagine shapes and sizes of buildings. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't you have any words of encouragement? Okay, after you got so much. Well, you. It's a challenging job. Uh, usually, you uh, spend a lot of time in the office. Yeah, yeah. If you, and, but it's very uh, satisfying at the end of the day. You can see your work. I'm satisfied with my work. You know, at the end of the day, I produce a PQ. You know, mm -hmm. all these, all these hours. Uh, sometimes you spend months uh, doing measurements and description, and then end product, and then we give it to the contractor you know, uh, for the pricing feeling of satisfaction. satisfaction you know? mm -hmm. So you must take pride in your work. And you all can ask me questions. You can ask me about architecture or yeah, don't, don't, feel, don't feel shy, no? don't just take notes, you can ask me, you can, you can any doubts, anything you're not clear, uh, even the video man, no? you mm -hmm. can ask. Uh, uh, can yes. uh, they walk in the office or the site? Okay, they yeah, both. both. Like for me, here, this office, we are consultant here, so we work in this office. Okay, we came in, you saw, right, uh, we have three floors here. So all the QSs are, are working in this office. Then when when the time comes for us to check the contractor's work, remember I, I mentioned the contractor submit that claim at the end of the each month, right? They say I've done fifty percent of the forecast. So I need to go to that site of the project, wherever it's located in maybe Cheras. I'm here in Mutiala Masara. So I've got to drive to Cheras to the project site and go there. And check. Architects also need to do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so we then we come back and we compile our work, we key into a computer in this office. So we, we go to the site in Cheras, we take notes uh, or about cap fifty percent. So we write down, take notes in the claim, in the profession, we write down, key in something percent, you saw hundred percent, the walls hundred percent, we write down on the Document. Then we bring back that document to the office. Then we key into the computer. That's a that's usually how we do it. There are some projects where the Q the QS is based on the site full time. That means he every day he go to the site there and his office is in the site and he works in the site. But he still report back to the office. Oh. Um, so that is a site QS. For us here, we based on in the office. Uh, consultant. Uh, do QS have a uh, drawing? We don't produce drawing. We take the consultant's drawings, like for example, architect's drawing, yeah. uh, structural engineer's drawings, <coughs> uh, uh, landscape architect's drawing, and we measure from there. What we don't do usually is we don't measure from mechanical and electrical drawings. The mechanical electrical estimates the costing eh, for mechanical electrical services are usually prepared by the mechanical and electrical consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, so the me mechanical electrical consultant prepare the drawing and then they prepare the costing also. Mm -hmm. Usually eh. but the client may sometimes uh, want us to do so they pay us additional fee to do the costing for mechanical electrical. Usually, we don't. Yeah, please feel free to ask, don't be shy. Huh? Free, feel free to ask. You can ask those questions if you want. Uh, actually, it's more for you. I, I, if I ask more, it's a bit of a foundation. Because you are, you are thinking of doing all this in your next, after you finish your foundation, you right? will yeah. move on. Right? So you may have questions. The this, real life. This subject is called introduction to construction industry. Uh -huh. So we we'll do this project. Mm -hmm. So we need to like for QS, we will study construction methods also. We need to know how a building is constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to know 
you know, how, how uh, column is constructed, how a building, how a roof is manufactured, and all the components for architecture you 